If you're like me and you've got skin of color, then you know exactly what I'm talking about and how annoying it is to deal with pigmentation problems. And apparently I'm not the only one because dealing with pigmentation problems is the third most pressing skincare issue for people of color after acne and eczema issues. And this is where vitamin C comes in because it's got multiple benefits and reviews and it's a powerful ingredient that you should really think about adding to your skincare routine if you're not doing so already. Vitamin C's benefits include increasing your skin's production of collagen, helping to reduce hyperpigmentation, reducing fine lines and wrinkles, and helping to reduce the signs of aging. All these benefits are because of the fact that vitamin C is an antioxidant. It's these antioxidant superpowers that gives vitamin C this really, really enhanced effect in reducing premature aging. So let's talk about that unpleasant fact, aging. What is it? Aging happens to us all. And unless you come from the planet Zorg, you will also age. And there's nothing wrong with that. There are two types of aging. There is intrinsic aging and extrinsic aging. Intrinsic aging is something that is a normal characteristic. Our bodies are not machines. And over the course of time, all these cells, all these tissues, all these organs will start to slow down. And that is the whole process of intrinsic aging. Intrinsic aging can be affected by your genetics. Any underlying health issues can accelerate this process. Extrinsic aging, as the name suggests, tends to be from the outside in. And the most crucial factor that causes extrinsic aging is the sun's UV rays. Now, I just want to preface this and make a little disclaimer that there is nothing wrong with aging. It's something that will happen to us if we're blessed enough to live a long life. There is nothing to be ashamed about by growing older you know, learning life's lessons along the way. I'm not trying to dehumanize aging or say that it's a bad thing. It's a good thing. What we're talking about in this video is premature aging, aging beyond your years, aging that doesn't reflect the vitality, your personality, your character, all those good attributes that you have. That is what I'm talking about in this video. The sun's UV rays trigger a chain of events and the production of free radicals. Free radicals are bad news in skincare and in general because they are responsible for causing and accelerating aging of the cells, deterioration of the cells, and in some cases, mutations to form and cancers to develop. Free radicals also increase the chances of abnormal moles, sunburn and skin damage. Your skin then produces extra melanin in response to this and this is what causes darkening and signs of aging. So one way of looking at it is that it's not the actual UV rays that are bad. It's the free radicals that happen as a result of the sun's UV rays hitting the body and being absorbed by the skin that is the problem. The same way as you know, people look at guns and gun control. It's not the gun itself that is the problem. It's the person that's holding the gun and pulling on the trigger that's the problem. So I'm saying that just to try and put things into context. I'm, and I'm not saying to demonize the sun or that the sun itself is bad, especially for those of us that love being outside in the sunshine, like being outdoors. There's nothing wrong with that. The whole point of this is just to try and put things into perspective and make us realize about little things that we can do here and there to improve our health and improve our skin. Simple. Now this is where vitamin C comes to the rescue. Like any noble superhero, it comes in and saves the day. The way I look at it is that free radicals are angry, they go around destroying things because they're missing a spare electron. And what vitamin C does is that it kind of is very altruistic and it gives away one of its own electrons and that calms the free radical down. The same way you have, um, you know, like, um, I was gonna go somewhere, but I'm not. Well, let's use something that most of us get. So let's say, okay, I've got a good one. A situation that we've all been in is when we're going food shopping at the supermarket. And more often than not, you see a toddler that is absolutely 
uncontrollable. He or she is kicking, screaming, throwing a tantrum because they've not gotten what they want. More often than not is sugary stuff that's not really good for them, but I digress. But the whole scenario is that you've got this toddler that's going around, slamming things, pulling things off shelves, crying, laying on the floor, throwing a tantrum. That's your free radical. Okay, now vitamin C is the responsible adult that then goes to that toddler and says, here you go, this is what you're looking for, here it is. And just like the, you know, just in the flick of an eye, the toddler calms down. And that's the same process of vitamin C and free radicals. And that's why we love it so much when it comes to skincare and preventing premature aging. I just wanted to quickly interrupt and just ask that if you're liking this video so far, then don't forget to give me a thumbs up and even consider subscribing to my channel. My name is Dr. K and I'm a family physician and a cosmetic doctor. And I do videos about health, wellness, beauty, skincare, basically all the tools that you need to go on and achieve your ultimate glow up on the inside and out. If those kind of videos sounds like they're your thing, then you're definitely in the right place and keep watching. And it would be really, really amazing if you thought about subscribing and joining me on this channel. That's all I've got to say. Let's go on back to our topic. Unlike other animals and plants that can make their own vitamin C, we lack the enzyme for us to create our own sources of vitamin C. So we have to get it from other things. Most commonly, we get vitamin C from our diet. Citrus fruits especially are amazing sources of vitamin C. So now that we've talked about what an amazing ingredient vitamin C is, you're probably tempted to go out and start gorging on fruits and vegetables and stockpiling vitamin C tablets. Well, don't be too hasty in doing that. When it comes to skincare purposes, the evidence for getting vitamin C from your food or from food supplements is rather lacking. Because if you think about it, the vitamin C has to be absorbed and broken down in our guts, be absorbed into the bloodstream, transported to the skin where it needs to work. And it's unlikely that this is gonna happen in significant enough amounts to cause noticeable benefit. And if you have generally a healthy balanced diet and you make sure to get lots of fruits and vegetables as part of your diet anyway, I wouldn't recommend adding extra because most of the time you'll end up peeing it out and if you are taking too much of the vitamin C, it can actually cause its own health problems. So the best way that currently we have is to go through the topical route, which is skin creams, lotions, and formulations that are directly applied to your skin. And the key thing that we're after, the biologically active form of vitamin C that has the skincare benefits is L-ascorbic acid. But getting this L-ascorbic acid to the skin, to where it needs to work, is tricky. And I'm gonna explain why. It is unstable and easily oxidizes when exposed to light and air. Finding a way to keep vitamin C stable is one of the biggest challenges that it comes when working with this product. The active form of vitamin C that works in skincare is L-ascorbic acid, but this is easily oxidized when exposed to light and air, and it converts from L-ascorbic acid to the hydroascorbic acid. And this is why the formulation of your vitamin C serum is so important. If you get a vitamin C serum that's oxidized or you use a vitamin C serum that's oxidized, it's just wasting your time and your money. So many cosmetic formulators have come up with ways around this problem. One of the methods that they used to get around this obstacle is to create more stabilized, forms of vitamin C. And the two forms that are amongst the most stable are magnesium ascorbyl phosphate and ascorbyl 6-palmitate. And you may see these in the ingredients list when you're reading the back of your vitamin C serum. It's a bit unclear though if these versions work just as well as L-ascorbic acid and if they are effective. In my opinion, the ideal thing would still be to stick with L-ascorbic acid because this is the active form that works. All the other things we don't know enough and it's not clear if they work just as well 
as L-ascorbic acid. The second reason why vitamin C is notoriously difficult to work with is that it doesn't penetrate into the skin. Vitamin C is water soluble and water loving, whereas the skin's topmost layer is water repelling and is made up of oils. So you can see the problem that we have here and that oil and water don't mix. To be able to work, vitamin C needs to bypass the skin's barrier the stratum corneum and is poor at doing this, especially on its own. This is also why the vehicle or the carrier that's used to deliver the vitamin C to the skin is important. It has to be able to keep vitamin C stable long enough and deliver it to right where it needs to be in enough amounts to work. Research has found that we can produce an improvement in how well vitamin C penetrates into the skin by combining it with other treatments like fractional lasers, microneedling, and high frequency ultrasound. However, in reality, most of us don't have access to these treatments. So that's why the formulation of the vitamin C is very, very important. So vitamin C serums that come in a silicone suspension or mixed in with oils called squalanes may be the trick out of the situation. These are all ways that brands are trying to improve the delivery of vitamin C. So look out for these ingredients when you're next shopping for a vitamin C serum. L-ascorbic acid, as we now know, is the active form of vitamin C. And evidence shows that it's effective between the concentrations of 10 to 20%. That's the sweet spot. Although you can get anything up to 30%. Even though in theory, giving a higher concentration is more likely to be effective, there's also a higher chance of irritation. And it's not really, in the grand scheme of things, influence things all that much because the main issue is getting enough active L-ascorbic acid to the skin. Let me qualify it. Once you've got your vitamin C serum in that range, any additional increase in the concentration is not likely to be that significant because what's more important is making sure that your product is not oxidized and making sure that it penetrates through to the skin. If you don't have those two things on your side, it doesn't matter whether it's 20%, 30%, 100% of vitamin C, it will not be effective. Plus, the higher the concentration of vitamin C, the more likely you are to get skin irritation, especially if you suffer with sensitive skin. Vitamin C is best used during daytime. Why? because it has photoprotective abilities. Sunscreens only block 55% of free radicals produced by harmful UV rays. And this is even when it's applied properly. And we all know that most people, myself included, don't apply nearly enough sunscreen. So to optimize your sun protection, combine your sunscreen with the antioxidant powers of vitamin C. So your ideal morning routine would be to cleanse, tone, apply your vitamin C serum along with a moisturizer and then finish off with SPF. The good thing about vitamin C is that you can also combine it with the majority of skincare ingredients out there. The only thing that really you should be cautious about mixing it with is retinol. That's not to say that you can't use both vitamin C and retinol in your skincare routine. It just means that you have to use one in the daytime and the other at night. And that happens to be the best strategy because retinols are better used at night. And as I just mentioned, vitamin C is best combined with SPF to give the ultimate UV protection. You can even use vitamin C along with skincare acids like glycolic acid, lactic acids, and salicylic acid. And research shows that you may benefit by combining them. If you were to do that, what I would suggest is to use the acid first and then follow on after with the vitamin C. This is because by using the acids, they help to prep the skin and lower the pH enough, thereby increasing the penetration of vitamin C. But it's not for everyone. If you suffer with sensitive skin or you find that a lot of ingredients tend to irritate your skin, this might not be one for you. Or if you're willing to try it, it may be better to start slow, test patch, 
and gradually build up. You may notice that you do get some redness or some stinging if you're using the active L-ascorbic vitamin C. It's not to say that, you know, that's out of reach for you and you can't use it. It's just a matter of building into things slowly, maybe starting off with a lower concentration and maybe using it on alternate days and then gradually working up. That pretty much tends to be the philosophy when it comes to skincare. Start low. Let me see how many um, rhymes can I come up with? Start low, start slow and let it glow. Start low, start slow to get the glow. I like that. How long does it take to see results with vitamin C? The honest truth about vitamin C is that it's not the best or the most effective ingredient for hyperpigmentation. There are better, faster and more powerful ingredients that will help for that. And I've got a video about the treatments that work for hyperpigmentation, which I will link somewhere here, here, whichever side it is. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't have a role or it doesn't work. It works. It's just that it's going to be a much more subtle change over a long period of time. What people tend to notice more quickly is a change in the skin texture, luminosity, and fine lines start to kind of look more smoother. And this is usually noticed within two to three weeks of starting a vitamin C serum. Then over the next eight to 12 weeks, you can then start to notice the lightening of the hyperpigmentation. Vitamin C is safe to use across all skincare types, all skin tones, all skincare issues. It's even safe to use if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. When you start looking for vitamin C serums, you'll start to notice one thing, which is that they tend to come in very small bottles, usually around 30 mils or one fluid ounce. And don't worry, I know it might seem like they're really tiny bottles and it's not going to last you. If you're using vitamin C once a day, then one of these bottles will last you, you know, up to three months. But it's really important to be checking your product on a regular basis if your formula has changed from a clear color to an orange or a yellow, it means that it's no good, it's oxidized, and it's therefore no longer effective. Is it possible to make your vitamin C serum last longer? Even the best kept vitamin C serum will eventually oxidize because you cannot control even the minutiae amount of light and air getting into that bottle. It's been recommended that another way of making your vitamin C last longer is not only keeping it out of sunlight, but keeping it in the fridge. Personally, I don't do this. I just don't got the time. You know, I've got other things going on and I don't know if this is doing too much, all in the name of skincare. I don't know, you tell me whether it's worth it and if that's what you do when it comes to your skincare. So when it comes to vitamin C serums, it's not just the concentration that's important, but the formulation and the penetration of the serum. Otherwise, you might as well just be wasting your time and your money. And I don't want that for you. In part two of this video, I've done even more research and I've come up with the five most effective and highly rated vitamin C serums. You don't wanna miss that part. Come back next week and I'll be sharing that with you. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in next week's video. Yes, I know. You don't want to miss it too.